That is very good news. Ugh. Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and to my 307,000 mile Volvo XC90 that I picked up for 800 pounds, including fees on Copart not so long ago. Now, in the last video on the channel, you'll have seen that I took this car to Volvo for an appraisal, an inspection, and the results were, well, hardly surprising, but very bad. They gave me a list longer than my arm of things that needed sorting on this car, from pieces of trim inside to suspension components, injectors, radiators, and they told me that it would be uneconomical to repair. However, I'm not one to give up easily or take no for an answer. And so I went onto eBay and put together a basket of all the items that Volvo said I would need to get this thing, well, roadworthy and good again by their standards. So I just thought, why not have a go myself? But then the most amazing thing of all happened, and I'm not making this up, eBay got in touch with me and said, how would you like us to help you get your car MOT ready? And I explained to them that it wasn't just a windscreen wiper or a new side light bulb that it needed. It was actually this, all of these things that the car failed its MOT on. You see, after I took the car to Volvo, I took it for an MOT, knowing it was gonna fail, but thinking then I'll just get an essential list of things because the headlining being saggy and the cup holder trim missing isn't really a problem on a car like this, but these things are all problems and things that the car means I cannot legally drive until they're sorted. But I explained all of this to eBay and they said, well, to be honest, you'll be able to get all of those parts on our website. And not only that, you'll be able to get some with a discount with their current MOT offer, which I'm gonna link in the description where you can get up to 20% off MOT ready parts on eBay. But needless to say, we have got all the parts in this car. And well, I'm not gonna introduce you to some mechanic and some workshop. This is a garage that I've just turned up to that I've rented for three days. And I'm gonna to attempt to get this car through its MOT by myself. I was truly ready to accept defeat after that inspection from Volvo, after the MOT because well, this car is worth pennies. It's got 307,000 miles on it. It's not been loved for years and years and years, and it is almost 20 years old. However, I always see past that. I think it's got so much potential. Got beautiful, beautiful interior, the green carpets that I love so much, the leather piping. We've even got a fridge, which reminds me, I put a bottle of water in there this morning, which is really nice and cold. And I think there's so much potential for this car, and it would be such a shame to see it go to scrap, because I think essentially, that's where it would have ended up. So huge thank you to eBay for helping me save this car, but we've got to do all the work yet, haven't we? So let me show you what's in the back, pretty much everything you can possibly imagine. I guess we should really just get started. If we head to the back of the car then, open up the split folding tailgate, uh, it will reveal a sea of parts. I was not joking at all. Now the most obvious uh, parts here are wheels. I've actually ordered complete replacement wheels. These are not the ones that are currently on the car. They are the same rare 18 inch BBS style wheels that were only available on the executive, but essentially it failed the MOT on two front tires. And I figured instead of getting new tires all round, I should just replace the set of wheels because not only have these got better tread on and they should be able to get the car through the MOT, I can actually just sell them or sell the slightly worse set when I'm done with them. So it's sort of two birds and one stone. I'm getting better wheels, I'm getting fresher tires, but I can also sell either this set or the set that's on the car once I'm done with them. So that's wheels. On top there is a radiator. Volvo picked up on that. Now that's not an MOT component, so I'm gonna prioritize these in stuff that needs to be done to get through the MOT. From eBay, I also acquired a proper breaker bar in here. It's something I'm quite excited about and I've never used before. A proper torque wrench. It's not an electronic one, but it has all the settings on there so that I can torque things up properly later on. We've got an ABS warning lamp, which comes on in the car when we drive it for a few miles and any warning lamp on an MOT is an instant failure. So there are a number of things that the ABS lamp could be caused by, but I've gone for the cheapest solution, which would be the ABS Reluctor rings, I think they are. I've got those, managed to get them from eBay as well. And we're gonna be trying to fit those to hopefully resolve the ABS light on the dash. We've then got the near side obligatory mirror, which is the passenger side, 
wing mirror. Uh, we all know that's absolutely buggered. So I've got a replacement. It's a power fold one as well. So it should just go straight on and, and, and work. We've got a defect for the passenger side front lower suspension arm. We're going to be replacing that. Actually, we're going to be replacing both sides because you might as well. I've also ordered front anti-roll bars for both sides and ball joints. I think a few of those things were picked up on the Volvo inspection. But as we're under there, as we've rented this ramp, let's just get it all done. And the last repair immediately major defect is the exhaust emissions exceed manufacturer specified limit. Now, this is a bit of a tricky one, although Volvo did tell me that the injector was leaking. So that can obviously wreak havoc with the emissions if the injectors are dirty or not working properly. So I'm going to replace injector number four if I can. And then I've got some Red X diesel solution. Again, all came from eBay. And I'm going to run through the fuel tank. We'll probably have to go and fill it up and then give it a blast on the motorway, pretty much on the way to the MOT center. And hopefully that will solve that problem. So they're the essentials list of things to get done. You've also got some new number plates and some new lamps for the back just to go through the advisories as well. But we're going to be focusing firstly on the suspension bits. They're the things that terrify me the most. I have no idea what I'm doing. If any of you have been watching this channel for a while, this is going to be quite a big deal me actually getting my hands properly dirty by myself. It's gonna be a massive learning curve. I hope it pays off. So now that we're getting all of the parts out of the XC90, it's a great time to reiterate that everything here has come from eBay. And not only that, I was able to save 20% on one of the most expensive components, which was the control arms, thanks to their MOT offer, which goes until the 30th of September. You'll be completely surprised at what they sell. They have millions of parts and accessories from brands you can trust. People are often unaware that you can get tires and number plates on eBay too. So definitely make sure to head to eBay UK for all of your MOT parts and accessories needs. And remember, you can get 20% off until the 30th of September. This in here then, I'll tell you, this was an absolute pain to find. Hidden away in the very crevices of the car, the locking wheel nut for these wheels. I've ordered new wheel nuts, lug nuts for for the wheels when I put them back on because I hate locking wheel nuts. The amount of times I've had issues, A, finding them, but then using them, uh, you know, I, I don't need them. And also these are pretty redundant nowadays. Thieves today just, just steal the whole car. So anyway, we're gonna switch these out for normal lug nuts. But before that, we do need to use this locking wheel nut to get these wheels off. So you know how they say you shouldn't say things if you don't want to jinx them? Well, I jinxed it. No matter what I tried, I could not get the front right wheel off the car because I could not get any purchase with the locking wheel nut key. The other three wheels came off without much of a fight, but this front right just would not budge. Well, we're not off to the best of starts. I think that clock's wrong, but I think it's around one o'clock and I got in here at around 10. And as you can see, <laughs> The wheels are still on the car. I had this with my uh, second Range Rover. The locking wheel nut key, or the actual nut itself on this front right, it's just not working. I've managed to get all the other locking wheel nuts out, but this one, it's just spindling on. I think someone's completely threaded this nut before, um, but we're gonna try, say we, I'm gonna try hammering it and doing anything just to get it off because I've got new lug nuts coming. Don't really care about these wheels. Certainly this front right is absolutely buggered. So I'll be using one of the newer ones. So I'm just gonna do anything now to get this wheel off so that we can, well, properly get started on the suspension stuff, but also we're gonna need to replace this tire. So just classic. So thanks to this hammer and this breaker bar, we've managed to get some purchase on this locking wheel nut. Finally, I'm still convinced there's nothing you can not fix with a hammer. Let's just do the last bit here. Yes. Gosh, I genuinely thought, it's been three hours, guys. Maybe two and a half actually working on this. I genuinely thought I was not gonna get this nut out. Thank God.
So with that wheel finally removed, I could now move on to the suspension. I decided to start on the driver's side, although had I really been thinking straight, it would have made more sense to start on the passenger side, which is where the control arm failed on the MOT. Nonetheless, as you're about to see, that wouldn't really matter too much anyway. Okay, well, wheels off, which means now I can finally move on, actually, and uh, have a look at the suspension. So I think what we're going to be changing today is, or hopefully over the next three days, should I say, is the lower control arms at the front. So uh, you can see the bush is completely perished on this one here. And on this side as well, the lower control arm. And then we've got the sway bars or the anti-roll bars, which is this long, thin part here. We're gonna replace those as well. I decided to start with the anti-roll bars as this looked like the easiest first thing to tackle. However, from my impact gun to a breaker bar, I just couldn't seem to crack anything loose. I decided to spray this upper bolt with penetrating fluid and leave it for later. Having no joy with the anti-roll bar bolts, I thought I'd try the lower control arm. I first had a go at the nut that secures the arm to the ball joint and happily, I was able to get this off. I was so relieved. Before moving on, I wanted to see if I could get any movement on the control arm by levering and hammering it, but I had absolutely no joy here. I thought I'd have a look at the passenger side of the car to see if I could make any more progress. However, I just ran into the same issues. The best solution at this point was to eat a packet of squares. It seemed pretty obvious to me that nothing was going to budge, so I emptied a can of penetrating fluid onto all of the stuck components, hoping that overnight this would loosen them up enough. I also ordered a cheetah bar or a long metal pole to use as leverage, a blowtorch and mole grips to arrive the next day from eBay in case that lubrication wasn't enough. Oh dear, well this has not got off to a good start to be honest. Um, I was kind of expecting it not to go so well but unfortunately we're falling down at the very first hurdles here. We had all the issues getting the wheels off to start with and well the issues we're having now are actually much the same. I'm just struggling to undo the bolt. I first tried to do the anti-roll bar, which is this 18 mil at the top, and there's a, I think it's a 16 mil at the bottom. They're slightly different. But I'm just spindling the entire nut, or the entire screw, when I'm trying to get the, the nut off, and it's very frustrating. Then I moved on to the upper bolts on the lower control arm, and I couldn't get them uh, to come loose for the same reason. Again, we're just spindling the entire, the entire nut, or the entire screw. So uh, a little bit frustrating. So I mean, I've only got a couple of hours left today and I haven't achieved anything, or at least it feels that way. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably go and fit the passenger side wing mirror and then maybe put the new number plates on, potentially have a polish of the headlamps as well. Some pretty satisfying stuff. And at least then I can go home today feeling like I've achieved something. But these suspension bits, I mean, all it is, it's just nuts and bolts. I can see, you know, exactly where my, nice new anti-roll bars are going to go all looks like it's going to fit perfectly we've got new washers and stuff on there i just can't get the old things off which is so annoying anyway let's stop with this now i have spent a couple of hours trying to get these off i'm going to have to think of a solution for that but otherwise we can at least get some stuff done this afternoon while we still have time so i'm going to start over on the passenger side now for the wing mirror so we can see the old wing mirror here is yeah completely messed up and it failed the MOT because of it or partly because of it and rightly so um, it's obviously extremely damaged and full of all sorts of horrible things lots of cobwebs and the main problem is that the adjustability function doesn't work so I can't really use it as a mirror in my driving position I can't you know see what's going on because I can't adjust it so it needs to go I have got a replacement in this box here now it should be a power fold just like my one, and it should be exactly the same. The only difference will be that it's not painted blue. So it will go on there in just the black color, but it's certainly the least of my problems. Hello, and I'm not too worried about that. Um, this hopefully, touch wood, should be fairly straightforward to fit, at least less challenging um, than it has been to try and do the suspension so far. So let's give it a go. 
I first decided to disconnect the battery at the back of the car as this job would involve slightly removing the door card and I wouldn't want to upset any airbags or anything like that. This is super simple, it's three 13mm nuts to remove this silver tray, then there's a plastic cover and then two 10mm to loosen the battery terminals themselves before taking the negative cable off first, putting it somewhere where it can't really move and doing the same with the positive. So to get the door card off in order so that you can access the plug for the wing mirror, you first got to prise off the silver grab handle in the middle of the door. I did this with a metal tool, but you really should use a plastic trim remover. And then inside there's two T25 bolts that you need to unscrew. Once you've done this, it's just a case of prising a little bit more between the door card and the door itself and popping out the plastic holders. Okay, so the door card is loose. We pulled off the silver handle here to reveal a couple of T25 screws, which are out. And then this just slips down enough for us to reveal this connector, this green connector, which is gonna pull out. I'll have to do it with two hands. And that is the uh, power to the mirror. And then I think this is just a 13 mil nut. We'll find out actually. Yes, that's 13 mil and we'll uh, take this off and then we'll be able to get the wing mirror off itself. And there we have the old horrible wing mirror. It's a shame I can't save this painted casing because that's part of what is completely damaged. But from what I've got here and to what I've got here as the replacement, uh, the connectors and everything look the same. So let's go ahead and, and do the reverse of what we've just done. Put this new one in, I'll reconnect the battery and we'll see if it works. Okay, that looks pretty nice and secure. I've done the 13 mil back up. The fit is really nice. Shame about this here. Potentially I could have put that together a little bit better and, and glued it in, but that's okay. We just wanna check that it works fine. Anyway, so that is nice and secure. So now what we need to do is plug this connector in. Should be nice and easy. Let's just click that. There we go. Now I'll reconnect the battery in the back of the car over here and see if it works. Let's have a look, shall we? Right, so battery reconnected. Let's see if we use this control here. Yes. That's brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm actually dead chuffed about that. We've done something today. And the powerful button, let's press that. Great, it's a little bit slow but it does work in and out. Perfect. That is very good news. That is all working perfectly. And that took me no more than 15 minutes, probably including disconnecting and reconnecting the battery. So that is a job very well done. I wish the suspension was <laughs> that easy to unbolt and bolt on everything. Okay, well, let's put this back together now. Well, it's the end of day one now, and it hasn't been a complete disaster, but it also hasn't been a roaring success. Managed to do the passenger wing mirror, which is one MOT item that we can tick off the list. Uh, but I, I'm still stuck on all the suspension components. I was worried about fitting them, but I've actually struggled with even getting the old bits off. So what I've done is I've taken apart what I can, which is not much. I think I've managed to do one uh, lower bolt and I've just sprayed the heck out of it with penetrating fluid. And so hopefully overnight that'll help a little bit and we'll come back and look at it tomorrow. But there's a few other things we've got to do. Needs number plates. I've got a new radiator. I've got an injector. So we need to have a look at all of that stuff. And I can't remember everything else, but uh, we'll tackle it again tomorrow. Uh, for you guys, that's gonna be right about now. Except it's not. In the interest of keeping these videos short enough to enjoy your dinner with, I've decided to split it up into parts. And so you will be seeing the progress we make in episode two in not so very long at all. Let me say a massive thank you to eBay for sponsoring this video. Genuinely, without them, I wouldn't be doing this. It would not be possible. They have supported the channel in such a way that hopefully it means we'll be able to save this car and in a few days time, take it for an MOT and it can get through with flying colors. But we'll have to see, and you'll have to wait and see until the next episode to see if that's going to be possible. So if you've got an MOT that's imminently coming up, head to eBay UK for all your MOT parts and accessory needs and get yourself 20% off 
until the 30th of September. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed and you're enjoying the content, make sure to subscribe now, like the video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one very, very soon.